All right. Minus the dings in the box. The new Hobby King Pixler version 2 has arrived. Packed pretty decent. Comes with the wing spar, the push rods. I just ordered the version with no electronics. That appears to be a hot wood in there. There's the fuse. two props and it looks like wing hold down or that's that's actually well I guess we'll find out what that is and then there's a motor mount in there too it's hard to see so this one I got for $43 you can get it with all the electronics for probably quite a bit more. And if you order it without the electronics, make sure you order some servo extensions because that is quite a ways to go. That's a good foot or more. And it came with one servo extension there but that's just the, the pigtail with the twin. So you hook both servos together. That's all they give you in the no electronic version. But it's your typical foam. Feels pretty sturdy. It also has a wings, uh, another spar in here already. The tube there. You can see the tube and that's where your other spar is gonna slide in. So I'm going to get the plastic all taken off and get to putting it together. Sorry about the fan, but it's too, it's too hot out here not to run it. So I did notice one thing, it does not come with instructions, or my kit did not come with instructions. Not that I see anywhere. Weird. So Hobby King, there's your first strike. Nope, and they're not inside there either. How is that supposed to stay on there, I wonder? There's no magnets. This is just supposed to stay like that, huh? Also, strike two. How the hell does that stay on? Well, this is why these guys don't send me stuff for free is because I'll criticize the hell out of it. And that's ridiculous. Wait, what's that? Nope, oh wait, nope. See, that one's got a magnet on it. Why does that one have a magnet on it but this one doesn't? Wow, the halves aren't even glued together. So I'm guessing we gotta put everything inside before we glue the halves together. Probably including magnets. But since there's no instructions with this, I have no idea how they want you to do it. This Hobby King didn't send me any, any instructions. That's pretty ridiculous. I expect that from China. You know, your average China. I know this stuff's made in China, but that's pretty ridiculous. Hobby King, you're slacking, man. Yeah. It's not in the box. All right, well, I'm going to finish taking stuff apart and seeing what I got. All right, so looking at it, I'm guessing that's where the servos go. But these grooves here are for the for the push rods 
and they're supposed to come out back here somewhere. That's pretty, just kind of ridiculous. I don't think I've ever seen something come like this. Of course, I don't build a lot of foam planes. I do my own designs. So I'm not sure exactly how they want you to do it. But we'll get it figured out. Magnets are in this bag for the hatch. Right there. I'm guessing they want you to glue them on for some reason. They couldn't do it. And those will go right there, I'm guessing. Yeah. Not impressed, Hobby King. Not impressed. That's it. There is no instructions anywhere, not even a website to go to. Crazy. Alright, so I went through and found some gear. I got some old U servos with decent linked wires. I'll test them, make sure they work. I don't know yet. The airplane calls for a 1900 kV. We're going to go with 2200 kV. That ought to give her a little pep in her step, huh? And that's where these two plates that come with it the wing bolt down plate and the motor mount plate go. And the servos go inside like that. I haven't glued anything yet. Uh, probably want to put an extension on that servo and the other one that's going to go in there because when you put the halves together and you pull it tight, it's going to be really hard to get them plugged into a receiver. But just got the little old cheap Tower Pro 9 gram servos for the rudder and elevator. And I'll use the other cheap ones that I've got in a bag of servos from the flying field at the barbecue. The motor I got off of eBay, I ordered five of them for like 23 bucks. I'm telling you guys, the eBay motors, they're not all bad. If you order the pack of five, you might get one bad one out of five. Still worth 23 bucks. And then I got... I pulled this out of my Nomad glider. This is also an eBay, probably knockoff JR receiver. You can find these for anywhere from 19 to $23 a piece off of eBay. And I've never lost radio communications with the plane, except maybe the Lazy B, but I'm pretty sure I had my Spectrum receiver in that. I've never lost radio connection with these cheap eBay $20 receivers ever. Alright, so I'm going to glue the servos in, glue the plates in, and then get the push rods lined up. Make sure all of that works before and the servos are centered and work before you glue the halves together. Because once you glue those together, she ain't coming apart until you crash it. And I'm just going to use this foam glue I've had forever. And it's still good. My garage probably gets 130 degrees in the summer. I think I got this off of Amazon for the foamy, the, the uh, real thin foamy, flat foamy airplanes. It works real well. It just takes forever to dry. And I'm going to have to make some metal tabs for the canopy because the canopy didn't come with any and it only came with magnets, but not the tab like that has there. So I'm going to have to find a piece of metal and cut them out and glue them on the canopy. So if you're like me and I've noticed, I looked on YouTube, there's no build video for this one without electronics. And the one guy who puts the one together with the electronics, he just didn't come with instructions either. So I guess they do not come with instructions, which I just don't get. 
So hopefully this will be some help for those of you that might pick one of these up. I know it's an older airplane, but they're still selling them at Hobby King for a pretty decent price. Hopefully it flies good. All right, I'm gonna get to gluing. All right, well, since this didn't come with the little metal tabs on here for the magnet, they only, they only gave me two magnets. I have them stuck there so I don't lose them. When technically you need three, you need one for this hatch and two for this hatch. So I happen to have a little metal shim in one of my drawers. So I'm just going to mark it, cut it with my bandsaw and glue it on there. Probably use, I don't know what I'm going to use. Maybe epoxy probably work the best. So we'll see how that works out. In the meantime, one of my blue servos was no good. So I used one of these used servos out of my bag of servos I got. And glued the rest of the pieces in all with white glue and the push rods. They're glued in there with white glue. And then they come out the back. So I'm going to get to work on my cutting my little metal pieces for the hatch and I think we're about ready to glue the fuselage together. Alright well I got my little metal pieces cut and epoxied on there. That's what I ended up using. I epoxied on the magnets. I've actually already held the fuselage together and it sticks real nice to the magnets there. I've also epoxied in the motor mount. So you need to put your motor on the mount after you, or before you glue it in is what I did. Uh, check the rotation on the motor before you glue your halves together because there's no way you're gonna get in here to change the leads. So mine was backwards, so I had to change the leads. Also, the 30 amp ESC wires are a little short. You can see there that you would really be tugging on it to plug in your battery. If you look at exactly where it's at, that's where it ends up. So I made up an extension a long time ago for another airplane and I put that on there and it works just fine. So also check your servos holding the fuselage halves together and make sure they don't touch each other, which I did. Make sure your rudder and your elevator servo are plugged into the right plug on your receiver. It just makes it easier so you don't have to worry about it later because it's going to be difficult to get in there and change those. So basically make sure everything that's going to be inside is inside. I still haven't put on my little Y harness for the ailerons and obviously they go, it runs, I don't know why that keeps zooming in, it runs through that hole there up to the wings which we haven't messed with yet, we haven't even touched the ailerons so make sure your pigtail is sticking out of there with your two right and left aileron servo wires before you glue any of this together. I was thinking that maybe I could tape this thing together, but I don't think it'd be very strong. So before you glue it, make sure you have everything in the airplane. Your rotations checked, your servos are checked, your wires are long enough. Uh, make sure all that's done and hold it together and test it all, make sure it all works, but just by holding the fuse halves together or take some clear tape and you know temporarily tape it together make sure everything works before you glue this together because once you glue it together you're not going to be able to get at your ESC or your servos so those things need to be dialed in before you glue this together and once again this didn't come with instructions which I've watched several videos on YouTube nobody covers the actual building of it just putting in just putting it together, the one that comes already with the electronics. This is the 
way you do it when you buy the cheap version, the $43 version from Hobby King, and you have to put everything in it. This is how you need to do it. I'm assuming. So far, I think I've got it pretty much on track. So, I'm gonna do that aileron servo lead. And then I think I'm gonna tape it together for now until I'm for sure I want to glue it. Make sure everything's perfect first. Including aligning your tail, because you can hold it together and still make sure your stuff's aligned right for your tail and your push rods, in other words. So I'm gonna do that and we'll move on from there to the wings. Alright, so fitting the aileron servo, I found a couple that actually had really long leads on them. But the actual length you're gonna need is about 18 inches. That's one foot right there. So I would get at least an 18 inch extension well, completely you need at least 18 to, because that Y connector is gonna be about, I don't know, you need at least that much hanging off the end to hit that Y connector that's inside the fuselage over there. That I taped together. I did not glue it. I glued the tail on, so at least that part's glued, but I wanna be able to get my stuff out of it. Like my receiver and you, absolutely cannot get any of that stuff out if you go with stock parts so anyways not to get sidetracked you're going to need at least i don't know i would get at least a one foot extension eight inches you might get away with eight inches but you need at least 18 inches from the servo to the end of the wing of wire so Whatever makes that up with whatever servos you got should work fine. All right, I'm gonna finish hooking these up. Like I said, I found these old servos. They work just fine. And these had leads, real long leads on them, so I'm using them. All right, made it out to the flying field finally. We're gonna test fly the Bixler here. I haven't checked the CG and there's no instructions to give you the CG. So I'm just gonna stuff a three cell in it and do the finger test on the wings. Probably about an inch and a half, two inches back. And see what happens. I'll be filming by myself today. So it's not gonna be the super duper quality that I always bring, right? No. Anyway, nobody's been out here to the field in a while long while it looks like it's pretty overgrown so i'm glad i'm not trying to take off on that today i got some new trees growing there <laughs> wow i know i haven't been here in three months so might head over there to the main road and test fly a couple other airplanes here in just a minute because the road is closed there's no traffic so that will be a bonus All right, well, let me get the battery in and get her powered up and we'll go fly. All right, pretty sure we're recording now. Like I said, I'm here by myself. Just stand by. All right, let's power it up. Uh, yeah. I always check my connection just to make sure there's nothing loose. Imagine you gotta stuff that way up in there. How we keep it there, well, that might be a problem. Stuff these in there, I might keep it there. Let's see where we're at. Oh, that's slightly nose heavy but I like it it's always better to be nose heavy than tail heavy 
right, left, up, down, left, right. Power. All right. Let's go. Hey, it flies. Sure is noisy. It glides really well. Wow. Got a nice breeze coming out of the southwest. <laughs> it's probably not meant for a lot of aerobatics but, but why not right that was all rudder <laughs> wow Likes to porpoise, so obviously it's a little bit nose heavy still. Well, I don't know, my battery might have slid back. That's probably what's going on. That makes more sense. So we'll have to put some sort of piece of foam in there to keep the battery from sliding. But other than that, the thing flies great, and for $43, I don't think you can beat it. That's without electronics. They're still selling them at Hobby, or yeah, Hobby King. Good looking airplane and it flies really well. Pay attention to my build video. I show you the motor I used. I used a little bit more powerful motor than it recommends. I used a 2200 kV instead of a 19. Wow, it glides really well. All right, let's try to land it without destroying it and all the weeds. So my battery definitely slid back. It's a little harder to control now. Doesn't want to come down though. I guess we got to go way out there and start our descent because I don't want to walk all the way to the end of the runway. down I'm gonna have to walk anyway golly keep it down low all right let's try that can it come down for me I'm gonna have to force it down Still gotta walk a half a mile.
All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed the build and the flight. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.